So this video is going to be getting this 2011 XR650L back up and running. It's been sitting for about a year and a half, maybe two, with the top end apart. What it's doing is it was really hard to start for some reason. And then I did an oil change and I found a pad stuck to the, the magnet. And I looked it up online and I, dude, I did a lot of research, man. I looked up all kinds of inner engine parts. What, what could it possibly be? I was wondering. Okay. And I found out that it was the fucking rocker arm. Once I replaced it, it started right up. It went boom, started right up, but then it was da, 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 da. It was wild. Just bad. All right, yeah, we'll see what's up and get it fixed. All right, got her back home. Now, the brief backstory on this bike, it's my buddy Dave's and he bought it brand new. It's got just over 10,000 miles on it, and he's done all the aftermarket add-ons himself. If you look around, he's got quite a few, and she's had a lot of hard miles. He actually took this bike out to Colorado and Utah with me, too. We did some, some killer riding out there. But yeah, this old thumper's been stationary for too long, and I think she's ready to go hit some trails. Set this to top dead center. The cam timing is good. This line and that line should be level with the surface of the head. All right, well, based on Dave's complaint, I decided to pop the camshaft out, figuring there would be an obvious problem with the decompression system on it, which led to the broken rocker, but I didn't really find any issues. So let me discuss where I'm at, show you how this all works, and I apologize if this gets boring. Here's the rocker arm that Dave replaced. You can see the decompression tang is broken off. It should look like this one that he replaced it with. When he put the new rocker in, he said he got all that noise. So one can only assume that this little decompression tang was hitting a faulty system. But it's possible maybe he just misadjusted the valves or something else because if you look at this rocker face, it does look kind of hammered for, for a brand new rocker. This cam's equipped with two decompressors. The function of the first one, which is located right here, is to keep the exhaust valve open a scotch during cranking RPMs. And then when the engine starts, this acts as a counterweight and it should keep that decompressor deactivated with help of centrifugal force pulling out on it. You can see this is the part right here that actually contacts the rocker face and keeps it the scotch open. So when it's deactivated, it will look like that. And now it wouldn't contact the rocker anymore. The secondary one is on the back and that is for reverse. So you can see if I spin it backwards, I can't hold it, it will spin backwards. And that's because it's on a sprag clutch that I'll show you when I take this apart. So spinning forward, it stays stationary. And then if it's to kick back, it will grab this and lift that rocker a touch open to decompress on a kickback. Here's a look at the spring-loaded pin that holds that secondary reverse decompressor in position. With the cam inside of the valve cover, we can see that the pad is contacted both. So this is the primary decompression, and right now it's in the activated state. So as I start to rotate it, you'll see it's actually lifting that rocker. Even though I'm holding finger pressure on the rocker, you can see it's now lifted it off from the main lobe. And then as it keeps going around, let's see, it should, if I hold some pressure on this, it should snap back. And right there. So now it's, it's dis deactivated, and it should stay in that position if the engine starts, uh, because this counterweight will fling up and keep it in the retracted position. And so remember, this one doesn't spin. It would be locked with the pin. But if it, if it did spin backwards, we'll show you what would happen. We can see, boom, this, this secondary one has caught this little pad that sticks off the pad that broke off the rocker, and it's lifted the rocker off from the cam in its entirety. So uh, originally, I thought that this might have contacted that pad as well, but we can see... From this view, it never does. This is the only part that contacts the rocker face and the, the extension is for the secondary reverse decompression.
The sprocket flange is a press fit on the cam and it is keyed as you can see right up top of here. So make sure you put that back on right. Beneath it you'll find a washer and then there's a good look at the sprag clutch. It has these spring loaded rollers so it can spin counterclockwise but cannot spin clockwise. Pulling that off so that, that's the secondary decompression. We'll pull that off and that rides on this surface right here which looks in good shape and then here's a good look at the main decompression so it has a spring on this side where my thumb is a little detent that we'll talk about on the bottom and then a detent on the top this is the counterweight this is the part that decompresses when it contacts the rocker you can see that it sticks out just a little bit further than the flat part of the rocker on the bottom unless it's in that um, Sorry about the focus here, unless it's in this state here. So when, when the engine starts, that counterweight should act to fly this out and keep it down. And then you can see the bottom, it, it's, it sits below the bottom of the surface. All right. And this little part here, I think, is what gets worn out. It's very hard to see any actual visual wear. I just talked to Dave, and he said, go ahead and put it back together the way it is. Hopefully, it was just a piece of dirt. I have a feeling I'll be putting a cam in this in the future, because you can only you can see the way the system is. I mean, all that hammering all the time, it's definitely going to wear the pin out and this piece out. So I say it needs a cam, but we'll put it together and see what it does. Since this is a pretty failure-prone system, I was just reading it's common for guys to get rid of it all together and then weld up the uh, oil hole here so you don't have oil pressure bleeding out. Another good option is to just replace this entire camshaft. I looked it up. It's only 175 bucks, But you would want to replace all four of the rockers, too, at the same time if you're going to do that. If it were my engine, I would get rid of it and then put a manual decompression. You could actually machine this out. The casting's still there for the old-style uh, manual lever decompression, and even the rocker has the, the little pad on there for, for that. Here's the one on the XL. Much more reliable. Seems good. Well, I think I found his noise problem. I went to adjust the valves. It gets four thousandths clearance on the intake and five on the exhaust. And these were all good except for this one. Listen. <laughs> you can actually see how high the screw is on this one, too. I should have checked for this in the beginning, but seeing as how he had a broken rocker arm, I definitely wanted to inspect the cam and see what was going on there, if there was anything obvious that led to that broken rocker arm, because that happened... You know, he found that in his oil like quite some time ago and then continued riding the bike after that. I'm thinking he probably adjusted this when the uh, decompressor was, was in the activated state. That's my only guess because I know Dave's no dummy. I mean, he knows how to do stuff. So I'll get that tweaked. And, and moment of truth, I did make sure to check the oil level in the crankcase too. The frame's empty, but that's normal when they sit for a while. So let's fire it up and uh, hear what we got. Oh, listen to that noise. That's normal. My bike actually does the same darn thing. Interesting. It's all that oil burning off the uh, exhaust there. It actually sounds good. Well, minus. Ooh. All right, now I am getting a, a tapping noise. Listen to that. Clearance again. All 
right, well, you guys heard it. It was nice and quiet at first, and then for some reason that decompressor kicked back in, and so we're going to take it back apart now and get rid of it. I'm sure it was a lot quieter now than when he started it because you guys saw that crazy valve clearance. All right, this is next day. I've removed the mechanism. You want to weld both of those oil holes shut so pressure doesn't bleed off. Tack weld that pin and tack weld that pin too, so in case you know you don't have those go flying out when the engine's running. I put some light grease on the lobes in case of any splatter, put some tin foil on it, and that's ready to tack. I'm also throwing his original rocker back in since that's mated to the camshaft. If you're getting rid of the decompression, don't forget to take this little spring pin out of here too. Wouldn't want that to go flying out and floating around your engine. Should have a little spring on the bottom of it too. All together, let's see how she sounds. I'm 99.9% .9 confident that noise is going to be gone. Here we go, choker. My neighbors hate me by now. Let's take it for a ride then. These grips are disgusting, it's super sticky. Number two, five bucks. Oh no, I ain't used to this. I ain't yeah. used to pump them out. I want to. All right, no more engine noise, but definitely need the car cleaned. I tried blowing it out. I'm gonna try one more time doing that rev trick where you cover the intake up at the same time. It's nice on these uh, XORs that you can conveniently get to the air filter. So what you do is rev it up and then cap this. Here we go. Uh, carb's gotta come off for sure. Choke is looking pretty crusty. And here's why she wouldn't rev up. It's a constant velocity carb, so when you rev it, this floats up and I can't even push it up higher than halfway with my finger. Unless I force it, boom. So, yeah, it's getting stuck in the middle. Let's see what the inside looks like. Not as bad, but definitely smells like turpentine and has some green haze all over it. So I'll get that cleaned up at work. We'll take it for one more ride tomorrow after we get the car back on. But just to conclude this whole engine saga, it seems Dave had two engine noises uh, after he put it back together. He had the excessive valve clearance from adjusting with it at the wrong position where the decompression was still engaged. And then he also had, apparently, a faulty uh, decompression device. But that still doesn't explain why the rocker broke, because uh, that was the main decompression that was hanging up, not the secondary one. Uh, so my theory on why the rocker pad broke is, I'm thinking that this little spring-loaded pin that sits in the head, where I showed you before, that's what uh, keeps this located and keeps it from spinning. I wonder maybe when this gets all slooged up and older and the spring gets weaker, maybe it, it allowed this thing to spin at like uh, when he was revving it up or, or you know, doing wheelies or doing crazy stuff. Or maybe he, when he dropped the bike and it was still running, an accident. Because he, he's crashed this bike too a bunch of times. Uh, heck, when we were out in Moab, he, 
well, pulled up to the camp like he laid her down doing like 40 miles an hour once uh, so and I'm thinking this thing skipped ahead and then the the pad on that rocker contacted this and that's what caused it to break so that could be but we'll see how long he uh, rides it without the um, decompression in there if he doesn't have any problems he'll probably just leave it that way and if not we're going to order a complete cam all four rockers got the carb nice and cleaned up there was a lot of corrosion in between the body and the bowl it's always good to take some grease and uh, rub that on there still has some staining in here but nothing crazy a lot of corrosion came out of this thing and uh, the stack works good now so nice and smooth let's give her one more shot here should fire right up let that carb bowl fill, and here we go. Oh yeah! I guess the last big question to answer is how does she start when uh, it's hot with uh, the decompression? So, I mean, cold starts has, has not been a problem. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Oh, I didn't like that too much. Now, this battery is like four years old or something in here, so it, uh, Dave's not going to like that. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Here it goes. Oh, I, get, I had the ignition off that time. Yeah, it does like a little little kick back there, huh? Mm, well, have a feeling Dave's gonna want to put the factory cam in it now. I guess we'll be doing this job three times. Oh well. <laughs> what are you gonna do? At least we know that was definitely the noise now. Yeah. 